Hi, good morning, everyone. Hi, thanks so much for being here. I first need to just say some thank yous. I mean, don't say she's going to start crying already because I... I'm going to try to hold it together, but thank you so much. Alora, you know that song, Return to Me, is from my old uh, California community, and I love it so much. Thank you. And perfect meditation, a nurse about heart anatomy and the universe, couldn't be better. And Lindsay, oh my gosh, Taoism is how I started to move away from Catholicism back in the 70s. So thank you for that unexpectedly. And Brett, thanks for offering a little prayer when I was getting some sun this morning. And of course to dear Annie and um, Dallas, our ministers, thank you. Uh, everybody's so loved and I feel all the love and it is really a special day. It feels magical in many ways. So, um, just a warm welcome to everyone and <clears throat> to everyone on Zoom and in virtual world. Thank you for being here. So my talk today is called 3 plus 3 and it's Everyday Spiritual Gems and they're for practice, <clears throat> excuse me, when you need to let go and surrender or to recenter and reclaim your peace, stillness and spiritual power. The actions and mindsets I'll be speaking about allow your inner light to shine out from your sacred heart. And the first three gems are from Reverend Jeff Anderson, who was a minister, a senior minister at Oakland Center for Spiritual Living, where um, it was my community. Uh, he sadly transitioned in March. Um, Ah, but he was a wonderful man. And the second set of gems were inspired by Imam Kamau's Sunday message they gave to us in June. So I'll start out um, with a quote from Rumi. And it is, Submit to a daily practice. Your loyalty to that is a ring on the door. Keep knocking and the joy inside will eventually open a window and look out to see who's there. So I have a story for you um, to start today. Um, about two years ago, to almost to this very day, I began uh, the 2100 mile journey driving from Northern California to Michigan. And that was uh, two, you know, uh, two years ago. And um, it was an unexpected move uh, my father passed away unexpectedly and left me his home and um, some of our family property. Uh, my brothers did not want me to sell or rent or, and they love me a lot and they're supportive. And so I decided to not retire a year later that was my long-term plan and moved to Eugene, Oregon, where I was going to retire and, um, you know, my life just moved in a totally different direction. And uh, it was a really drastic changes, adjustments, and I had to make some very hard choices. And, um, you know, retiring was difficult after uh, living and working and um, California for like 30 years, so, um, and I wanted to go to Oregon, it's so beautiful there, and it's just a magical place, but that didn't happen, so I'm here now, and happy to be here. Um, so the whirlwind began, and I started planning my retirement, got a moving service for a huge truck for all my furniture, and, you know, a two-story place that I lived in, and a lot, donated, said goodbyes, visited my old places that I love so much, um, just all kinds of things. And, um, you know, I especially went to Yosemite. It was one of my last places I went. I went there a lot and, um, you know, said goodbyes and there I was off. And I had a cat dilemma. 
Um, some of you know I had a dear cat that passed away in January, and she was almost 15. But anyhow, so she was like going on 14 for the or 13 or so for the trip, and she could not tolerate a plane ride. She had had two bouts of kidney failure, hospitalizations, treatments. And I had vowed after the last time, and she was so traumatized, I would not do it again with her age. I just wouldn't. So I had to drive. She had to come with me. I never traveled with a cat, cross country, although I have driven back and forth several times, but um, not usually by myself, though. But so I made a whole back seat thing for Ari. I had a fold out house, I had a mini litter pan. It was just awesome. And she had the space, the whole back seat, everything else is uh, my personal things are jammed in the back and in the front seat, but she had the life. And everything was going well. We took off and um, the only thing was is that um, the hotels I was used to staying in would not accept cats. There was no way, no how. And so to do the consistent drive through Middle America, which is the route I took, it's the quickest and the straightest, and it was really hot. It was late August. So um, I plotted out Motel 6, which I had never stayed in, and there were challenges, and it was not what I had expected, but uh, it was enlightening in many ways. Um, so anyhow, um, we were doing fine. Um, we were on our way. My first night was in Reno, Nevada, and then we went to Salt Lake City, Utah. Everything was fine. Ari was content. Um, you know, I was occupied with music, talking to my friends, uh, family, oh my gosh, singing, praying. <laughs> affirmations. I just, I'm such a verbal person. I, I kept myself occupied. And, you know, the, the beauty of driving through that, you know, Wyoming, Utah and into Wyoming is so gorgeous. I mean, the mountains and the birds and the flowers, it was just, it was spectacular. And then everything was going well until Cheyenne, Wyoming. And the landscape turned flat and just so boring. I mean, just flat, boring. If anybody's ever driven that way, and I have before, but um, oh, it was not good. It wasn't good. In the open plains and the dryness and wind. I had gotten into a couple rounds of that wind through the plains, just kind of whipping my car and. I thought, okay, this is just fields and corn and soybeans and farms. And I thought, okay, you know, and then I had the um, spotty cell service, which really was annoying because, you know, I was keeping touch and looking on my phone and, you know, that wasn't working. And um, Ari was starting to get miserable. It was warm in the car, even with the air conditioning. She started whining and rubbing her little nose on the um, netting on her big house, and she was staying in one corner, and I thought, oh, boy. And um, I just started to just question, like, what the hell was I doing? I was leaving everything I had planned all my life, uh, my friends, you know, everything. And my job, I mean, my profession I had for so long, it's just so many changes. So was just the big why. And so um, I was on my way to Grand Island, Nebraska, and I settled in that evening, and Ari was lying on the bed, and she started getting really sick. She started breathing heavy and, you know, just kind of rolling, and um, I thought, okay, she was going into kidney failure again. I could tell. And was she going to die when I'm on the road in the middle of my trip? And I thought, this can't happen. So, of course, me with the research, I started researching local veterinarians. I researched, I got to the point that I researched, how do I transport a dead animal to Michigan, you know, cross-country preserve her? and transport her so she could be buried at my home. And I thought, okay. So I was really in a 
space that was just not right. I mean, I was going down that dark tunnel and it's not my normal self. Um, so I was just in this bleak period and I was petting Ari and I got a spirit message. I mean, it was like a like a God shot is what I call those. It was just a shot to my whole soul. And it was like, Lori, you create your own happiness and, um, you know, choose the path to light. You know, you just need to get back to the light and all will be well. And I meditated on that quote that I love from St. Julian of Norwich, you know, all will be well. I just kept saying that to myself. And I did a crystal and a tuning fork um, treatment on myself, a really long one, and I did one on Ari, and I went to sleep and I slept really well. I woke up in the morning and Ari was purring and rubbing on me and things were better, things were going well, and I, I, you know, it was God, it was spirit. So I went on my way, listening to songs again, spirit, classical music, and I, um, I got onto my iPhone, which I have an extensive um, folders. I have a lot of folders for my computer on my iPhone, and one of them is spirit. So I started looking through it. As soon as I got I saw Reverend Jeff, and I thought, okay, either Reverend Jeff, and I knew what was in there. And it was the three daily spiritual practices that Reverend Jeff shared with us. And he was such a beautiful person and soul, and so I'll share those with you. The first one is to find something of beauty to behold for inspiration and positive energy balance. The second one is to show big or little kindness. Be kind to yourself first, and then extend kind intentions and behaviors to others based on acceptance and empathy. And the third one is to be grateful for something or someone and say yes to everything. Say yes to the good and the not so good because every moment offers something to feel thankful for. And don't overlook or take anything for granted. So I read all those, I was getting ready to leave, took it all in it and I was just sobbing. It was like such a relief. And I was hugging Ari and I said, this too shall pass and all will be well. And I was off. And I just kept repeating every time I got into that negative mode, beauty, kindness, gratitude. Just beauty, kindness, gratitude. And, you know, to make a long story short, um, I just got in the car and I said the rest of this trip is going to be amazing. And did really well. I was showing kindness everywhere. I was like turned into one of these, you know, at the rest stops. I was sharing cold drinks from my cooler with everybody. I was waving to the truckers and the travelers and I was just like so happy. I was kind of like my normal self, only a little bit more ramped up. I was just so happy and you know the clouds I saw I saw the beauty on the flat it was still flat it was still the same you know road and um, you know I saw the black-eyed Susans and the pink and blue asters on the roadside and I started noticing the cloud formations and then there was a glorious sunset and and then I got to Davenport, Iowa, which was the worst Motel 6 of the trip. And I decided that would be my last night uh, at Motel 6. I was going to stay at, um, in Illinois and then go on home to Petersburg. And I decided, uh-uh, we are going straight through. We're just going to drive through and get home. So, um, you know, it was a really long drive. I was exhausted. And about 10 o'clock, I turned onto my street and right at the corner of the road, Dawn probably has seen her, other people have been to my home. There's a sign. There's a sign as soon as you turn onto my road, and um, my headlights caught it and just kind of glimmered on it. 
and it's adopt a road sign. It's one of those adopt a road sign in memory of Gloria Kinnear, who's my mom, who passed away in 2010. So it just was another sign that I was supposed to be where I was supposed to be, and I was home. So that's the end of that story, and actually it's kind of like a beginning. You know, it really is the beginning to a new chapter. So on to the second set, and this set is so cool. Um, more brief, no story attached to it, um, inspired by um, Imam Kamal. His message in June was consciousness rising, universe rising. And along with my own thoughts on his concept um, of being a soul gardener with a metaphor of a seed sprouting out of darkness by the rays of the sun. And all the roots of a tree communicate with all of humanity. A messenger of Allah said, worship the most merciful, feed the poor, and spread peace you will enter into paradise. So the three ingredients to become a gardener of the soul are spread, number one is spread peace to everyone you meet. Initiate an intention of honor, love, and respect. No matter the race, the socioeconomic status, the cultures, the political, the spiritual beliefs, none of that. Let go of your personal and worldly worries and reconnect with your soul stillness and the inner calm and the peace. Number two is feed people. And he spoke about feeding people literally, but not just with food, but with kindness and generosity and service and stewardship. Um, share your unique gifts of time, treasure, and talents, and show appreciation. Give thoughtfully and intentionally, and know that any giving has a ripple effect. Wake up when others are asleep is number three. Literally, Imam said before the sun comes up, wake, wake up while everyone else is sleeping, and you're still part of the darkness and the unseen divine light before the sun comes up. But we can wake up anytime. That's me. There's an opening. When there's an opening, you can just wake up and send energy vibrations to raise universal consciousness. And Imam Kamal said, Crack open the seed and let the light in. So go beyond the ego that's a false sense of self with its limiting beliefs. Be present here and now and connect with the ultimate ray of the sun, which is the true reality that our consciousness knows and remembers. We're part of the universe the ascension traveling all the way to the light of the lights. Our actions and connections to every living being helps to create a better world for us all. The only thing that does exist is a divine light that is pure, unconditional, and infinite love. And I'll end this message today with a quote from a Sufi leader, Llewellyn Von Lee. He said, we need to find our way back to love and the forgotten garden of the soul that reconnects us to love. This is part of its mystery and magic. So thank you all very much. Namaste. And thank you. Um, it's, time. <laughs> it's time for open mic. So if anybody wants to share their own spiritual practices or that help you get through the day or any challenges, it would be lovely to hear from you.